This is the Gamers Podcast Updates, here with episode 28, where we have E3 just passed, came and passed, we have all the updates, recaps of everything that just went on. So we're going to do this, splitting it in half, we're going to take the first half, where we're just going to throw everything that happened at E3 at you, show all the updates, all the games, everything that you can expect, then we're going to dive in the second half of this podcast, and we're going to start talking about what is our opinions and everything about the games that we think. So... Now we're gonna let's jump right on in here with uh, our first one. So we got a uh, cyberpunk here is our first one we're gonna be going in. Whoop! I'm almost going into it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're you're a little delayed on the stream, but <clears throat> so here cyberpunk was probably the biggest one. That's why we're starting off right away with it. This one kind of sold the show. A little bit well we everyone was really hyped and highly anticipated and expecting for this game they everyone was really hyped for it beforehand and then there's one scene in particular we'll jump into a little bit that kind of stole the show with everything that happened with it and uh the game it was already really highly hyped and it's been in production for what was it seven years now oh, was, it, was it really seven years i believe it's been a long time running with this game but there's one scene in particular that stole it, and we have this one our, our, right our here. Big, yeah, so our our big surprise reveal that gave birth to a new meme. <laughs> yeah, Keanu Reeves coming in and taking yes, over. I, I didn't want to spoil it. I didn't want to spoil it in case the people didn't see it. I didn't want to spoil it. But that left field came out of nowhere. Somehow they managed to keep it from being spoiled and no one was able to leak that, which I'm impressed by. We have another one, our next big hitter, and Final Fantasy VII, one a lot of people were really waiting for. For when was this, 2012 that it was first announced? The first teaser of this one came? It's been 20 years since we've been waiting, that's what it feels like. 20 years, (laughs) that's when the original came out. (laughs) <laughs> so we finally have after watching the beginning in Midgar many many times we finally have a release date on when the game's actually coming out quick update on it it's going to be a three part series game first part's going to be mostly taking place in, place in Midgar it seems and it's release date is set for March 3rd 2020 so this one's coming up soon heavily hyped heavily hyped game yeah. maybe game of the year contender for next Our year. next one. Yeah, for next year. It might be. I think it's going to take my vote. Next one. What we got? We got oh, Star Jedi Wars. Fallen Order. Yeah. After the cancellation of Star Wars, was it 1313 or 1616? I forget the numbers, but it was canceled. They had the big open world game, and now this one came out. And after like so many open world Star Wars games kept coming out and getting canceled, we finally had this one pop up and... Finally, it's stuck. It's coming out, and it reminds me a lot of the Force Unleashed, kind of with Star Destroyer they had going, where it reminds me of that kind of art style that uh, this mm. November, too. So we have more on that in a little bit when we talk about our... I mean, I'm assuming we have more on that in a little bit. Yes, yeah. Uh, we'll yeah. go into more of the news after we do this quick run-through. And feel free to jump in if you have anything more to say on these introduction to the games. Oh, you're doing fine so far. The only thing I was going to say about Star Wars was, uh, but we'll talk about it later when we get to the, as long as we have time for it. Yeah, we got a lot of time. We're going to run through these really quick. But Marvel's Avengers, this was another, uh, I when I first watched the trailer, it didn't look as great until this trailer at E3, and then it really sold the show. So we got this one coming out. Um, I forgot, I, didn't, I missed the release date. I think this was I mi- 2020. I, I missed the release date just because I'm not as interested in it, so... But I we might check it out of curiosity anyway. I was on the mix, and after this trailer, I'm a little more hyped about it. We have more information on this game, too, later on. So stick around right after a recap. Another big one. Xbox fans, one that probably took their show, the biggest thing for Xbox, is the new Halo game. They always have yeah. their new Halo pulling them along. And this one, I felt started out a little slow, but it's... I don't have much to talk about here. It's just bringing back Chief once again. I was saying, I kind of ran out of things to talk about before Chief even showed up here. 
Before TV Vision. <laughs> well, they didn't reveal a lot of gameplay, which is very cinematic. And then, you know, here's Mas you know, here's Chief. So. Yeah. Brought him back in. You kind of get a little bit of a backstory, you know, with uh, a little bit of a story, but not much of what's going on. So. This one, I'll we let you take away with Watch Dogs oh, news. Yes. Take it away with you want to say. Okay, so this is Watch Dogs. Uh, Watch Dogs it was the you know uh, the much anticipated sequel to Watch Dogs Three. They just renamed it Watch Dogs Legion, and they came up with a whole new system for where you could play anybody in the game, any of the NPC characters you can basically control, from you know this flamboyant looking Miami guy to to that guy to even a freaking seventy year old former assassin grandmother, which. <laughs> The character I am most hyped to play, but yeah, it takes place in London. Got all sorts of things going on. Going to be the best watch, probably the biggest and best Watch Dogs to date. Hmm. That's all I got on that. <laughs> jump on to um, Elden Ring. This was a big game that a lot of people were hyped about because after the Game of Thrones ending, with uh, George R. R. Martin teamed up with uh, yes. from Soft, some from software. And this was, given, this was giving us a lot of uh, Lord of the Rings kind of vibes. Yeah, that's what I said. I Right when I was watching, I was like, this reminds me so much of Lord of the Rings. It has to be inspired. I, and then its name is Elden <laughs> Ring. Name. Yes. But, yeah, I'd like to see, I would like to see more of this to kind of know more of what it's about. Because right now, there's not a lot of information on it. But I can tell you, it's going to be a lot like Dark Souls game. We'll get more on this later, actually. So just get ready to throw your system out the window. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another big seller for Xbox that keeps them going around. We got Gears 5. So Gears has the original trilogy was pretty much the selling point next to uh, uh, Halo with the Xbox. Then Gears 4 was okay. You got Laura Bailey as voice actor, so that's good. And then Gears 5 now, continuing on with the new people of the storyline. We'll and this had a surprise about... too. What's that? This had a surprise, too. Surprise character. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll jump more in that, too. Stick around. A lot of reasons. A lot of uh, cliffhangers to keep around with us. Yeah, that one was uh, unexpected for some people. And Yeah. Next up, I'll let you take this with Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, so, okay. So we got Luigi's Mansion, of course. That still has no release date other than sometime potentially later this year. Uh, Luigi's Mansion is combining elements of the first two games. Luigi's Mansion 1 and Luigi's Mansion 2. And then there's a new character, which the internet, I'm surprised, has not gone meme crazy over, called Gooigi. Hmm. And you basically get to turn into goo, and there's reasons to turn into goo, and we'll explore a little bit more of that later on. But yeah, this comes out later this year. Uh, very niche title. A lot of people are looking forward to it. Not a big system seller, but it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be critically acclaimed, probably. And that's all I got on that for now. Was that poop in the toilet? That was probably Gooigi in the toilet. No, that was a ghost. But <laughs> a topic we're going to get into later if you stick around with us. Is yes, Luigi I've... really dead in this game? Find out when we talk about this game in like five minutes. Well, yeah, the Dark Souls crossover, remember? <laughs> True. Or not Dark Souls, um, whatever it was. I didn't set this one up. Castlevania, um, that's what it was. Dragon Ball, uh, we talked about this a while ago, the Dragon Ball Project X RPG game. Dragon Ball's games sell incredibly well. Look at every game they had. They were always high up on the selling. Even their last one, uh, Xenoverse, I think it was, or Dragon Ball Fighter, my bad. Dragon Ball Fighter Z was the one that overshot um, Street Fighter as the top fighter game in the game market it broke their streak of winning every year in a row so dragon ball games sell really well and here's another the rpg game i mentioned our last podcast back about and it looks insane yeah follows her way. well we'll get more into that later uh not a big seller but one i'm hyped about and i'm pretty sure you're a little hyped about here with yes, hard game. i am i'm ecstatic for this i uh, yeah. it was funny we were watching this okay so this was blair witch uh, based off the Blair Witch movies, of course, in the Blair Witch Cinematic Universe. As we're watching there during E3 Live, I'm like, oh, this one scene reminds me of that scene in the Blair Witch where the guy's in the corner, and <laughs> then they reveal it as Blair Witch. So, yeah, yeah. For, it looks like first-person horror survival of sorts. Uh, not quite sure what's going on with it yet, 
I guess you're exploring the mystery of the Blair Witch. Not a lot has been revealed, but we will. Like I said, I don't like you said. I don't think it's going to sell well, but it's going to. It's going to. It's going to be good for the big horror fan, the top hitter horror fans, and it's good for us, pretty much. Yeah, it gives me like that Resident Evil Seven vibes with that first person view and. Yeah. No. But jumping I'm on to. Another one that might not be a top seller, but it's still a really good... It was a good game. It lasts a long time. They still had DLC until last year for the original game. We oh, got yeah. um, Dying Light 2 coming out. Zombie Explorer. Zombies always sell well, no matter... Like, you put them in anything and it sells. Mm, and, this, and Dying Light in general is a very unique title in the way it takes on its, uh, its zombie action. Because, you know, it's very parkour-based and very... Yeah. Uh, you know, Hardcore it's makes up the game. Yeah, it's unique. If it didn't have that element, it kind of probably would just be like another. It would be a dead rising. At yeah. That point. So it stands on its own. They had a release date, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, once we finish the trailer, I'm sure it will show it. <laughs> this one, all RPG, highly RPG fans were huge into this one. Baldur's Gate, going back from PlayStation One going into this and we had a long this was like a 20 year wait we had before Baldur's Gate 3 finally was announced yep, and, and they announced it first at the Stadia conference that's true so we'll have more news on Stadia too so we'll see where that's going with uh... last one not a big hit at all very tiny thing I have no idea how this got past me a lot of people probably don't care about it but I'm big on VR I'm big on reboots of the, uh, the Chucky reboot I want to see mm. now we have a VR Chucky game that's just a little filler I, I, thing. I'm wondering if it's like a fan project or it doesn't really. I mean, or if it's like some sort of. It looks you know, kind of like Five Nights student. at Freddy's type of thing. That's what I mean. It's got a unique art style to it, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see what you do. I guess I guess you kill. I, I think I've heard about this before, but uh, we'll get more into that later. What did we miss? We missed. Did we miss anything? I mean, uh -oh. the only thing we really missed was uh, the Legend of Zelda sequel, but you know oh, that right. there's not even much news on that yet, so. Yeah, I pulled these no, directly no. from the E3 website, so if I missed any, uh, I guess they didn't see them worthy enough to be on this list. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the only major one. You know, I'm not including DLC for other games like Kingdom Hearts and Smash, because those, you know, you already knew they were coming. Yeah, even Witcher 3 had some new DLC coming out. and mm. So, with right, that... So let's, yeah, let's it. get into it. Let's get yeah. into our likes and dislikes of... Um, you know what so, we're looking forward to and I'll, you take it away here and yeah so we can spray off the list here i'm gonna have the trailers playing in the background to keep you entertained while we talk but um right away the top three that i'm big on was uh i'm sure everyone watching the podcast or even just tuning in can see how hyped that was for final fantasy 7 biggest mm -hmm. game for me is my all-time favorite i was eight when i first got final fantasy 7 you know what, since I'm going to talk about it, we're going to move over to the 7 trailer. I was 8 yeah, when I, I first I was got looking this. at this, I'm like, this isn't Final Fantasy 7. <laughs> I figured I'd play them down the order, but since I'm talking about 7, I'll play 7's trailer. Uh, I'm so happy to see returning characters, seeing them in high def. You see um, Weds, Wegs, and Biggs. Uh, seeing all the people. I'm really hoping it follows the original storyline. I Already here, you see the first boss going in the first Mako reactor, destroying it. It seems like it's following right with the games, the original game. So I'm really hyped for that. I'm hoping they stick with that and they follow through everything the same way. I, I like that they added that kind of cool looking slow motion kind of combat thing in, in addition to the hack and slashing thing. Ah, uh, yes. They had a name for it in the trailer, but I can't remember what they yeah. called it. For people who can't keep up with quick pace motions, who said the game's too fast for them, they have a slow motion where it pauses. They had this in Final Fantasy XV, too, um, where it slows things down. Yeah, I thought that, that kind of... I like that element because it, it kind of gives it a more tactical approach to it because now you have to actually kind of think about what... rather than kind of random button mashing in a way... So I kind of like that a little bit more. So I'm kind of I'm pumped that they did that. I'm definitely gonna check it out. I've never been a big Final Fantasy person myself, but you know I will check it out because it looks freaking amazing. Yeah. And the second biggest thing that I'm hyped about, and a lot of other are, pretty much everyone else is Cyberpunk. Oh yeah. This was probably. See, I'm a little worried. 
this might compete with Final Fantasy VII with Game of the Year. Is this this was set for 2020, right? I think so, yeah, uh, because it definitely I think it was March because there was a lot of March next year. Everything is coming out in March, and I think this is yeah. one of the March games. And sure. uh, yeah, this is um, you know it was one it was uh, last year it won uh, what was it most hyped game at E3 I think at the Game Awards or yeah uh, what was it what do they call that most looking forward to or I just call it the most hyped sounds more game like I can't remember they have an actual name for it like uh, but yeah and. Uh, and then, you know, of course, Keanu Reeves definitely sealed the deal there for a yeah. lot of people because, you know, a lot of people weren't even interested in the game until, but then when he came on, on stage, people were like, oh, well, this well, might be something I'm going to play now. I got to stop you there. If it went from being the most hyped game and people weren't even interested in it, that doesn't go well, hand in hand. Well, no, I mean, I mean, for the, there was for the nays, for a lot of the people who weren't injured, for the people who, mm. you know, the, outside of that circle, the people who were hyped. For the other you know, people, a lot of the stragglers who were like that is, it's the world's yeah. biggest meme, right here, right now. Oh, Keanu they didn't Reeves. censor the finger. They didn't censor the Xbox did, but they didn't. Oh yeah, they didn't. I just missed that. Nope, I lost it. But yeah, Xbox. If you watch the E3, they were censoring everything. I'm not sure why, but when the Borderlands, I didn't show the Borderlands trailer. Why didn't they have that on there? But when they showed the Borderlands trailer, it was all censored. The middle finger was censored out. So weird. I was like, why are they doing this? Xbox new partnership with Nintendo. Well, actually, speaking of that's another news story for another day because, you know, they did just announce Banjo Kazooie for Smash Brothers as one of the mm -hmm. DLCs. And I mean, I'm kind of over Smash at this point. I've played it, you know, it's 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 got its Smash is one of those games I could play for maybe a month or two at a time, and then after I play through and unlock everything, it's kind of like only when friends come over I kind of play it. Yeah, see, I can't I even go friends, and unlock anything. It's not... Uh, but yeah, for me... But yeah, that opens up the level of the floodgates in a way, because, you know, when I was joking last year about Master Chief being in... <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, now, that, that's a possibility. These yeah, days. But, but the partnership. Yeah, you said you, had another, you said you had another game that you were hyped for, and... I didn't to cut you off there, but you mentioned that, and I was like, yeah. Oh, let's... my third one, right, Star Wars. This one, uh, you had these, the original, the open world was canceled. I was hyped for that, the one that was supposed to play, like, the Mass Effect. Now we have this new one, which I kind of like this a little better. I uh. take this more than a shooter, Star Wars. I take the uh, Force Unleashed kind of fighting style, so I'm a little more hyped for this one anyway. As long as they do it well, it's EA. As long as it's not microtransaction out the wazoo. Well, this was what I was going to mention earlier, but I think they did mention that for this game, they were not including microtransactions. They did say that. But, but now, you can whether say they have something you want. to replace said microtransactions... <laughs> yeah. Whether it be some sort of season pass type thing that they never update, you know. <laughs> True. We'll find out. As long as it doesn't take the way of Dragon Quest Inquisition... Yeah, they'll be like, here, here's the micro. Here, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I don't know what the hell they're planning, but, you know, I, I think it will do okay. Like I said, it's not definitely. I don't think it's gonna be game of the year material, but I think, it might be a return to form for, Star Wars games for actually, you know, not, getting, so bashed. Yeah, we'll so. have to see. It'll be interesting. What about you? What are your top three most hyped? Uh, top three. Before I get to my most hyped, I can tell you what I'm most disappointed with this year. Let's see. Oh, well, that's <laughs> a lot for me. <laughs> um, but no, I'll, I'll, I'll get to my most disappointed. But um, my my most hyped definitely uh, Watch Dogs was on top of my list. I The second I saw that, I did not expect Watch Dogs to be to look well the first few minutes of it i was like this is kind of looking stupid because i thought i kind of forgot about the whole npc thing i forgot they were doing that whole thing where they were you know adding multiple characters and i saw the bald guy in the beginning i'm like oh god this guy replaced the other guy and then uh, we don't have aiden back anymore so i was thinking it was just one character but i love the whole idea of having multiple characters and having this whole you know that opens up so many potential possibilities for the story to go so many different places as long as it wasn't too pre-programmed to where certain characters die automatically regardless 
and you can't really do much with their endings. That's true. As long as it's it's going to be huge with how many characters they had, it's going to be a huge game they made. But yeah, don't make this character die. If they die, change everything up based on that. Yeah, I'm hoping they don't go that route where they're like, yeah, so say this ex-spy guy dies and he has no choice but to die. He will come just die because he dies and that's, you know, and that's, but it doesn't give you that freedom. I'm really hoping they keep the freedom in it and yeah. it has multiple endings and so many different ways you can go based off your actions. I'm hoping, but I'm hoping they don't mess it up. But yeah, Watch Dogs is probably my most hyped. And as far as the other, if I had to pick the other two games off the top of my head, let's see, what do I, let me go through the list here because I just kind of forgot what I had. Uh, Cyberpunk was good. Here's your granny. <laughs> my granny, yes, get it granny. It's funny, I never cared thing. for Watch Dogs until one and two, I watched two play. I thought they looked kind of boring. I Three liked one. Two, two was terrible. Two was awful. So I was, I had no, I had no expectations for three to look good. But it's uh, the terrible two series. Every single game, two is always the worst one. Right, well, except for Resident Evil. That's true. <laughs> Resident Evil two. I guess if it's a, usually a trilogy, I guess that for falls in. Uh, but yeah, let's see, what else? I, I just like as you know, just um, I was trying to think of what else I was looking. For. I you know, Watch Dogs had all my hype. Blair Witch was another one that I was really hyped about. I know a lot of people aren't going to be hyped about Blair Witch, but I am a huge horror fan. I love horror type movies. I love horror games. I love the whole thing. And what I love about the look for Blair Witch is I like that it potentially has like, you know, this vibe to it where it might legit scare the crap out of me. Hmm. And that does not happen. Because what I loved about the original Blair Witch movie was that it was very psychological and everything was in your head. So they didn't really show a lot on screen. So y you had to kind of imagine the horror yourself. And as a kid, you know, watching that as a 10 year old, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was, you know, that was a lot of, that was like, oh my God, what the hell's going on? And see, but I also love that this has Silent Hill vibes, Resident Evil vibes. Uh, I love yeah, it. I was the opposite when I watched it. I think I was about the same age when I first watched Blair Witch, and I was bored as sin. Like I was like, this is not even scary. Although I came from like eight, I think I was six years old when I watched the first Halloween movie. Yeah. You were watching Friday the Thirteenth, yeah. and you know having like. And then I, I was watching Friday. This. I was watching Friday the Thirteenth when I was three, and then having dreams that there was a mini freaking Jason at the bottom of my stairs, and there was a a secret hatch that I could escape out of, and. Hmm. Which, funny enough, is what Dead by Daylight ended up being. Uh, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> but like, um, but yeah, you know, like, I guess I had the mini Jason in my dream because on the NES version of the game, he was like three feet tall, and <laughs> that was such a good game. Such a good. <laughs> oh yes, but um, let's see. The third most hyped game, I would say, out of Blair Witch. Oh god, this is a tough one. It's a toss up between. I want to try um, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, but I'm not hyped about it. And I think potentially Dying Light 2. I'm really hoping that that kind of expands on the first one. And I'm hoping they keep a lot of the elements of the first Dying Light, which I liked, which we were talking about, that whole parkour style and that whole you know, everything that you can do in the game that made it not just another yeah. another run-of-the-mill zombie game. I'm really hoping that, you know, and I'm hoping you can do karaoke in a random tavern like that in the middle of a zombie <laughs> apocalypse, because why not? That's usually how they did it, where there's a little town, you leave the town to go kill the zombies, and you come back to your safety nest where things are going on, where people try to live normally. Yeah, and you know, uh, the, the thing I'm worried about, though, is in a lot of ways it does look very similar to the first one. So there may not be a lot of, you know... Yeah, even the story-wise, it's saying the character comes in, you're already infected, and you're going through, I guess, trying to find a cure or trying to keep yourself alive. Or, but it's following kind of similar to the same story route where you're fighting you against yeah. some other faction. 
So it feels more like a DLC or a continuation of rather than like, you know, a whole new thing. That's kind of the same way I felt about Unrelated, but like the Uncharted series. I kind of felt the same way about a lot of those games. You know, Uncharted 1 and, you know, oh, they're all great man. games. But Uncharted then like, was, Uncharted's the, um, what do they call that? Uh, there's a name for it, but I can't remember. It's something Epic Lodge, um, the, where it's pretty much four stories that are all one story but they had to be played out in four separate parts they yeah, call it a lot I, I, in books I know, I know what you're, I, I want to say it's not episodic but it's kind of in that realm but I know what you're getting at that, I can't think of the word right now I'm going to think of it later and I'll be like that's what it was but yeah uh, that's what kind of the same way I felt about Uncharted I felt like you know it was just kind of one big story and it was one big um you know, it was just one. Con it was it, none of the games felt new. It just felt like a continuation, which didn't make. Which didn't mean it was bad. It just, you know, I couldn't tell what I couldn't tell you what one game from the other was. Uncharted's probably pretty much the last best big story-based game that I've ever played. I don't think anything's going to compete with story-wise as Uncharted, and it's kind of that's there. So they spin it off with his daughter, because you know that's going to happen. I don't know if they will. It looks like they're kind of done. I would love if they did. I would jump all over that. Start a new uh, series. Sp sp speaking of that, side rant, before we go to our rants about what we dislike about E3 this year, what I dislike is they're casting Tom Holland as young Nathan Drake in the Uncharted movie. What is that BS? Yeah, I'm not sure why they wouldn't keep um, Nathan Fillion with how well his fan-made trailer did. Yeah, that fan-made thing was freaking awesome. But I think what they wanted to do was, I think they wanted to go, like, in Uncharted, was it Uncharted 3 or 4? Uh, where you get to play as young Nathan Drake, like 14-year-old Nathan Drake. That's 4. And yeah, and um, so that's what I told you, I can't tell the games apart because they all blend together. Uh, <laughs> but you, you know, and how you meet Sully and everything and your, your bond with your brother and all that. I think they're basing it off of that, and I think the reason they're doing that is because they're choosing a young actor, unfortunately in this case Tom Holland, who I just I personally don't like. I like uh, him. I just I I just I don't know why I just there's something irritates me about him. I think he just looks like a unshaved garden gnome. no a, a shaven garden gnome. Hmm. And uh, I thought he made a freaking piece in Spider Man. Uh, you know Toby is still my Spider Man. Toby is good, but anyone's better than Andrew Garfield's. Oh, I Spider -Man. loved Andrew. I loved Andrew. He was probably the worst Spider-Man. Oh, good actor, man. terrible Spider-Man. Take Spider -Man. That back. Good <laughs> actor, no. but not a Spider-Man. His Spider-Man, his representation was cringe and awkward. Yeah, I think that's what I liked. But anyway, um, we yeah, but aside, you know, like that that was. I think they did that because they want to continue the story and evolve. So if they decide to do more movies, he's not going to be like 50 years old by the time they're doing the third movie. He'll still be 30 and yeah. still look, still look like, so he won't look like, you know, he's playing Sully instead of yeah. Nathan Drake. It's but true. Um, going on to our E3 dislikes, I can tell you mine, my main dislike. Yeah, I your absolutely main. And this is going to shock you. You are going to be shocked. Hmm. I absolutely hate it at Nintendo's conference this year. Huh. That's funny because I am a little shocked. And everyone else was all like, everywhere I saw, Nintendo was so good. And I was like, I was bored out of my mind when I watched it. I, what I didn't like, what I, here's what I didn't like about it. Is um, it kind of followed the same, not the formula, but in previous years, like how um, every game they discussed mostly you already knew about kind of in like the past where yeah, like, so, like Sony, Sony did that a couple years ago where they had like the one E3 and then the next E3 it was the same thing well this one is, is like the previous direct they revealed all this stuff and then here they're talking about it again it's like you are, we was, already know this see that was, and it was 2017 little, Sony did so good and then 2018 it was the same stuff and it was a little overkill because it's like here it's like we have three Three Zelda games taking up, <laughs> and then like, if you're not a Zelda fan, this is wasting your time. I used to and be I'm a like, huge Zelda fan, and then Breath of the Wild kind of killed it for me. I'm alone on this opinion, but I no, didn't like no, Breath of the Wild. No, no, absolutely not. Breath of the Wild was terrible. I mean, I, I mean, do I think it deserved Game of the Year? I still think Super Mario Odyssey over Breath of the Wild. Out of the I five was all games, Horizon Zero Dawn definitely should have won. 
I, you know, Horizon wasn't amazing to me, but... That's where I felt the same about Mario. It was kind of just another Mario game. I didn't see the hype behind it. It, 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 I, I, I liked that, you know, you had the whole Cappy. I liked being able to control the souls of all your enemies. That was fun. Hmm. Uh, but, no, but what are they, seriously, so we had three Zelda games. We had, you know, the Breath of the Wild sequel that gets announced, which, you know, is not, definitely probably not coming to the Switch anytime soon. And if it does come to the Switch, it's going to be one of the things where they did with the past. Like you have Breath of the Wild, where that came, where it's originally slated for Wii U for like four years. And then, oh my God, the Switch comes out. So we released it on the Switch instead. And then we have, what was it? Twilight Princess was supposed to be on, what is it? The GameCube? Yeah, the GameCube and, and it went to Wii. And then it went to Wii. So it's like a thing they completely do. And then of course they, you know, they gave us more details on, um, on this one, which a lot of people, which one is this? Link's Awakening. Yeah. Uh, you know, this, so they gave us a little bit more detail on this one, and a lot of people are not for the same reason they didn't like Wind Waker because of the art style. And uh, I didn't like Wind Waker because of storyline. It wasn't even Link at that point. It didn't have anything to do with his descendant. It was a brand new story arc. Yeah. But then you have the third game, which is uh, Cadence of Hyrule, which is kind of you know like a, a just a indie game that's featuring. Link, for some reason, or Zelda—I don't remember which one—but it's still basically a, a Zelda game, and that took up a lot of that took up a lot of time. And then they had, you know, they had. I'm not an Animal Crossing fan, so that was Oop. a big. <laughs> That's where I had um, pull up. The best thing Nintendo had was Animal Crossing. I'm playing it right now. This oh, was the best God. game they showed off at their Nintendo. The only thing that had me actually say, "Huh, neat." I, I just, I never got into Animal Crossing. So here's here's the reason, I mean, it's, a lot of people are like, oh my God, they had so much content. And you know, yes, they did have a lot of games that they were talking about for this year that were getting revealed. And they were very focused on games that were coming out within the next six months, which has been a very Nintendo strategy at E3, which is great. Problem is, you know, there's games that are missing such as Bayonetta 3, you know, there was the game from a new game from Game Freak called Town, which they seem to have completely forgot about. And uh, you know, um, uh, this much rumored Metroid Prime trilogy. So there's a lot that was missing, but then what was there was a lot of the same kind of games that, you know, these Come on. very. You can you can build your own pass now, man. Come on. Get the hell out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Just get the hell out of here. You're trolling me now. Now, uh, so then, you know, they had these other games where, like, they're very much that, what do you call that? Like, the, that anime-style game? Oh, JRPG? Or, yeah, or a lot of those. And if you're not into that, I mean, it's not that I'm not necessarily into them. It's just the, the ones that they're coming out with are no different than, I can't tell two of them. I can't tell the two of them apart. <laughs> <laughs> they all look the same. And, Watch some uh, more. But yeah, it wasn't, it just, it, for something, my main problem is when your highlight reel showing what is coming from both third parties and indie developers, when your highlight reel that's two minutes long is better than your whole presentation, <laughs> there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, so that's why I was just very disappointed this year with you no, know, and I just, I, I don't know, I just it wasn't, it wasn't a home run for me. Aside from Luigi's Mansion 3, you know, looking as good as it does, that was it for me. There was nothing. Then there was no big surprises either. They had The Witcher, but you know, every, that, that's been talked about for months. And Resident Evil 5 and 6 are coming, but then, you know, you knew that was coming based off of how Capcom's relationship with Nintendo and Resident Evil is at this point. And then. You want to mention what's coming about 5 and 6? What is coming about 5 Resident and 6? Resident Evil 5 and 6? You want to mention what they're doing? What are they doing? Because I missed it. You're the one who said. They're coming to Switch. Oh, is that where I, sh I missed that? Yeah. Yeah, they were coming. They're doing a Switch board. But 5 is okay, but then, you know, 6 doesn't do much for me. I like 6. 6 was really but good if you like the story because they finally brought everyone together the way I was hoping for a long time and having everyone but, meet. Again, it's not. There was no. 
what got me is usually Nintendo has one big surprise or they'll have one or two big surprises that nobody was expecting. But this year, they just didn't have that. People knew Breath of the Wild was getting a sequel because the freaking, you know, the producer, or you know, was, oh my God, that guy scared me because I was like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> uh, the, they were talking about it for a while. And just, I'm going to wrap this up with this part because I'm going to let you get onto yours. But uh, oh, I lost it. I lost it. I just had it. It was uh, something about surprises. You know, they could have, you know, they announced last year in July that they had to be adding more content to Mario Kart, like another DLC, but then they completely dropped that. So, I don't know. I was just upset with that. They had an underwhelming... Uh, EA was very underwhelming as well, but only because, you know, Star Wars was their only good thing, and then they had sports games. FIFA. Yeah. Matt. EA is always <laughs> underwhelming, I feel, though. But I'll let you get yours so you could wrap it up, and then... Uh, yeah, so uh, we'll jump on... Uh, since I had really quickly talking about the Avengers game, I'm just going to rush through the people. They showed the um, a little uh, demo of all the people, how they play. So, Iron Man, they said he had huge potential, but pretty much his gameplay was just flying around, dodging things in the air. And they said his was kind of like underwhelming. Hopefully it gets better. They can use a lot better the way he's flying out. Um... Thor is pretty much a lot like um, Kratos in God of War. They fight the same, same combat type of thing. The Hulk is pretty much just get really fast momentum, charge and hit into things, and just smash your way through. Captain America fights a lot like Batman in the Arkham games. He's mm -hmm. That's kind of the same combo like moves. He fights just like that. And uh, Black Widow, she fights with uh, martial arts kind of things. A lot of her moves are flipping around, throwing people around. So what does Hulk wanna... do? What's that? What does Hulk do? Hulk? Momentum. Just gets he a lot of momentum things. and smashes <laughs> into things. <laughs> smashes things. Hey, he's going can... to smash, he's gonna yeah. smash Black Widow. He probably... Oh, there's a... They already... there's a... <laughs> he probably already did that once before. Oh, there's a video. <laughs> there's a fan fiction. Yeah. Well, no, they made it in their movie. That's what it was. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I didn't see the movie, so the latest one, so. Yeah. I know I, I accidentally spoiled it when Daniel was watching it, so that was hilarious. I still didn't see the newest one yet, though, either. A lot of I people. Uh, so, one thing, these companies are making all these articles like, people are outraged because the characters in the game look nothing like the characters in the movie and all the comments were all like uh who is the one outraged i don't see any comments saying people are outraged in fact we say it's a pretty good thing and so all these articles are falsely trying to uh i'm not sure why they're trying to bring the game down when fans they're not buying it they're all like no one's ever said that we actually think it's kind of cool so i'm not sure what's going on there I mean, are they supposed to look like the characters in the movie? Or? No, because the movie, you can go off of anything. The comic book characters, you can make them... There's a lot of different things. They but, can, I, I mean, they look like the characters. Like, you know who they are by... Yeah, looking. once you see, so like, like, you're looking I don't at... See, like, I could tell Black Widow is, and I could tell who Hulk is, and I could tell who Thor is, yeah. just by an Iron Man. Like, they don't need to look a certain way like yeah. they have their distinctive <laughs> yeah they all can they can look a little different it's a game you don't have to base it on the movie they can have a different look plus it's troy baker coming in as uh hulk i think and you got all these other people voicing them it's not the I, people from the movie I, so they don't that's have to what look. i think sometimes people forget is that a lot of times in these situations you you know these these are small game studio to develop no, not a lot of them are small but i mean a lot of them they have a much smaller budget than, you know, a film studio does. And so you're not going to be able to necessarily get, uh, um, oh my God, I almost, I almost called the actor Tony Stark instead of, um, <laughs> Robert Downey Robert Jr. Downey, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> you're not going to be able to get Tony Stark to do your voice. Um, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> to do your voice. And you're not going to be able to get all these, you know, big A-list movie stars to come in because they're going to want you know, millions of dollars to voice the game. So you're going to go with the lower budget actors who you could afford because you don't have that high of a budget. And plus, you know, there's also, remember people, this is based off of comic books. So some people act as if only the movie exists and that there's no source material. <laughs> yeah, there's a so, lot more to go on. They, so, they could just draw, draw from so many sources. They don't have to draw it from the movies. There's, 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 
decades of comics to, to draw upon. Yep, many different in versions. Easy, easy, so. So uh, we're at our time limit. So to end, uh, we're going to bring our original topic, our original question back up. Is Luigi uh, dead? You know, uh, they, they, I think in that when when they, in that Smash trailer and they killed him in Simon Belmont's castle. Simon Belmont. Dead. I'm going with two. He's dead. Yeah, now he's hunting. He's there you go. Look at there's even his own ghost form. See, it's there's Luigi. Luigi. And I'm surprised that's not a meme yet. That needs to be a meme. Get on it, internet. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Simon Belmont. Castlevania is what we need more <laughs> of. Luigi's like, I ain't afraid of these spikes. Watch out of my way, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. They should make it uh, a two-player game at this point. You know, they have, um, they have it as a local co-op, but I'm hoping they do an online. But Nintendo doesn't know what they're doing with online, so... Uh, that's true. I'm really hoping that they... Uh, they might do but bef you know bef we are out of time but i did want to mention one thing we do have our upcoming side project our side podcast the mm -hmm. spin-off of the gamer jesters podcast the jesters of the round table yeah and come talk at the round table yeah it's a round table discussion it's basically a discuss well discussion slash debate depending how you look at it and uh you know we're going to be talking about hot topics and you know sometimes potentially controversial subjects there's going to be some silly ones in between too like such as is luigi dead and we can <laughs> debate that that kind of stuff and um but then there'll be other stuff that's more heavy hitting like you know abortion and gun control and not that they're in the same realm i mean they're i mean i guess they could be but <laughs> you never you never know i don't want to when touch I, that one <laughs> but if you want to touch that one then come on, uh, you get at us and uh, on our socials, and we will get you on the show. And I just had someone respond to me. Uh, it's a woman, you know her. She said she'd love to. Oh, so, look so, at that. Yes. We we have. So if you're watching, we'll have a show going on Friday nights. I try to do it 9 p.m. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. So get at us, and we will get you like i said just when you you want to be on the show get at us and if you're good you might be a recurring panelist so there we go and with that we'll um i goofed up i don't have my closing outro clip so we're just gonna end it without an outro this week or we could just make one up we back that's that worked that's her outro <laughs> I don't know. And with that, <laughs> see you guys next week.